cross browser testing is a test type that allows us to compare and analyze our application in different browsers. We can run the same test on Chrome, Firefox, and Edge. In this session, you will learn how to set up the online Selenium Grid on Lambda Test. Also view the automation capabilities generator. Last is to execute the test scripts using Lambda Test online Selenium Grid. The first step is to create an account on Lambda Test. It's free to create an account. After creating the account, we can sign in with our email and password. My email is rex.jones at testforsuccess.org, then the password. After entering the password, we log in. Now, when we log in, we can regenerate the access token or proceed with copying the access token. For the access token, we click the right icon in the corner, then select profile. And at the bottom, we see click to regenerate and this option to copy. I'm going to copy the access token. Then we're going to proceed with going to set up Lambda tests on Selenium Grid. And that's the next step is to set up Selenium Grid on Lambda test. Now, for that part, there are three steps that we're going to do for setting up Selenium Grid in the conftest.py file. So let me go to PyCharm, open up conftest.py file. This was an existing PyTest fixture from a previous tutorial session. We're going to now set up Selenium Grid with those three steps I mentioned. The first step is to declare variables for setting up Lambda test. The second step is to define the desired capabilities. And the third step is to connect to Lambda test using a remote connection. Now, I mentioned here, there are second steps will be to define the desired capabilities. We are going to use three browsers. Therefore, I will demo three caps. For the first step, I'm going to use the username, which is equal to my name, rex.jones. Second is the access token. And for that information, I'm going to paste the access token. After access token, I'm going to enter the remote URL. The remote URL will use the username and access token, starting with HTTPS colon two forward slashes. After the forward slash, that's when we use the username. Between username and access token is a colon. After access token, that's when we complete the URL with at hub.lambdatest.com forward slash WD forward slash hub. Now we are finished declaring the variables for setting up Lambda test. After that, we're going to continue with the second step, which is defining the desired capabilities. Chrome caps is the first desired capability. And within that part, we're going to enter some of these properties, starting with build, colon. The build is going to be 1.0. Add a comma. After build is the name. And for name, let's make that Lambda test 
grid on Chrome. Add a comma. The third property is going to be platform. My platform is Windows 10. After platform, that's when I'm going to enter the browser name. And the browser is going to be Chrome. After browser name is when we're going to enter the browser version. And let's just write latest for the browser version. Okay, so we're finished with the first cap. I'm going to copy and paste the first cap. So the second cap is going to be Firefox. Change build from 1.0 to 2.0. Change the name from Lambda Test Grid on Chrome to Lambda Test on Lambda Test Grid on Firefox. And also change the browser name from Chrome to Firefox. Copy Firefox caps. And we're going to paste that information for Edge caps. And also change the build from 2.0 to 3.0. Change the name from Firefox to Edge and do the same for browser name. Now, we are finished defining the desired caps. The final step is to connect to Lambda Test using a remote connection. Start by creating a PyTest fixture. The params are Chrome after Chrome Firefox followed by Edge. Then define the name of the Pytex fixture which is driver underscore initialize and I hope I spelled it right. Pass in request. Let's insert a doc string because I see the yellow line under driver initialization. And for the doc string, the comment is going to be initialize driver for Selenium grid on Lambda test. Okay. Now, we're going to declare the desired caps. For the desired caps, if request.param equals Chrome, then desired caps update Chrome caps. Bingo. Now, update is a built-in function from Python to update the current set by adding items from a different set. Chrome caps is the other set. When I scroll up, we see Edge caps, we see Firefox caps, and we see Chrome caps. So, in the items inside Chrome Caps are build, name, platform, browser name, and version. The last step for Chrome Caps, let me see, yes. The last step for Chrome Caps is to declare an instance. And that instance is going to be driver equals web driver dot remote. I'm going to paste that on the next line. And I see there is this red information, and it could be due to spacing, because sometimes with Python, there is an issue with the spaces. And the desired caps, I'm going to make sure I do this, and I'm going to bring over this information for the if statement. 
to place it under yes. So some spacing that I had to take care of. Now, for the request equal to Chrome, I have the driver equal to webdriver.remote. Now, after that part, we're gonna make the remote on the next line, write command executor. Command executor is an attribute to execute commands. Equal to remote connection. Let me make sure I spell that right with a lowercase o. And I'm also going to import remote connection. Yes. Now, remote connection allows us to connect to the remote web driver server. I'm going to pass in remote URL, which include the username and access token. Next is the desired capabilities. Desired capabilities is a way to set the properties for online Selenium grid for Lambda test. We write the curly brackets and inside the quotes, let's write LT colon options. LT means Lambda test options. Then we're going to pass in the desired capabilities. And after desired capabilities, that's it when I add the colon and then there's our caps. This is how we connect to Lambda Test. We write the same type of statements for Firefox and Edge. Therefore, I'm going to copy this information and put that parenthesis on the next on that line. I'm going to copy the if statement and I'm going to paste it and make sure it's on the correct line. Change if to elif, which is the Python command. Change Chrome to Firefox in both places. Bingo. Now, do the same for Edge. So I'm going to copy Firefox and I'm going to move this up some and I'm going to paste. Change Firefox to Edge in both places. Bingo. Now, the last three statements relate to our test script. Make sure I get this right. Request.cls.driver equal to driver. Next is yield. After yield is driver dot close bingo now request dot cls is a test class the purpose is to collect our test script yield transfer execution to our test script and driver dot close is the finalizer for our test script it's going to close we are finished connecting to Lambda test using remote connection for all three browsers. The three browsers are Firefox, Chrome, and Edge. Now, Selenium Grid is set up. Next is to view the automation capabilities generator. And for the generator, let's go to the website. And on the browser, we're gonna look at the automation capabilities by going to this tab. And by default, we see the language is Java. And it allows us to select a framework. The frameworks that we see are JUnit, TestNG, and Selenod. We have the option of choosing a different language, Node.js, C Sharp, PHP, Python, and Ruby. Let's select Python. And it shows how the frameworks update to PyTest, Behave, and Lettuce. Now, when it comes to the Automation Capability Generator, we see on the right side of this page are Set Up Instructions and a code sample for PyTest running on cloud. Rather than creating our step-by-step -step code for all three browsers, we could have copied 
this code and set up Selenium Grid. But I prefer to do it step by step for all three browsers. It allows us to configure our capabilities, the build settings, and it have test configuration. We could have done that. Now, that's it for the automation capability generator. Now let's create and execute our test scripts on Lambda Test Selenium Grid. And we do that by going to PyCharm. And in PyCharm, I'm going to create another module by right clicking the package demo PyTest new Python file. And the name is going to be test underscore cross underscore browser test cross browser now in this file from selenium we're going to import webdriver from selenium dot webdriver we're going to have the common by import the by class also import PyTest. After importing PyTest, we use the marker by writing at PyTest.mark.use fixtures. The fixture name is driver underscore initialization. And just to be safe, let me go back to the conftest.py file and copy this information, which is the fixture name. And I'm going to paste it just to make sure I spelled it the same, and I did. Okay, now, let me make more room on this file. And the class is base class. And it will have no information. Therefore, let's pass in pass because it has no information. It's empty. The next class is test selenium grid. Base class is the super class, also known as the parent class. Now, this class will have information. And before we write this information, let's walk through the test script to see what that information is going to be. On this Lambda test sample app, we're going to click an item, like the third item. And after clicking the item, we're going to verify the note says four of five remaining. We could click more items, but we're just going to just do only one item which is the third item. Now, that's our test script. Copy the URL and go back to our test. And for this here, we're going to start by defining the test for Lambda test. Remaining checkboxes. Now, the driver is equal to webdriver.chrome. And we're also going to load the application with driver.get. Paste the URL. The next step is to find the element. So let's find the element by inspecting the third item. And it does not have an ID attribute, but it has a name attribute li3 with the value okay so that's the value we can find it by writing two forward slashes input which is the tag name square brackets at name name is the attribute and the value is li3 bingo we found the element so let me copy the value and after copying the value i'm going back to pachon and write driver dot find element. We found the element by XPath with the value of input as a tag name, LI3, bingo. 
the action is click. Next is the note. Let's go back to the application. The note four or five remaining. Inspect. And with this, it only has a class attribute within the span tag. And the class attribute has a value of n g hyphen binding. Let's scroll up right quick just to make sure we can see an ID attribute. And there is no ID attribute for any of the ancestor tags. Okay, so for this element, we can find it using XPath or CSS selector. Since the previous one was found by XPath, let's find this one using CSS selector. Span is the tag name. Dot represents the class attribute with the value of ng hyphen binding. Bingo, we found the element. And we know it because it shows a yellow background. Let me copy this and go back to PyCharm. Now for PyCharm, I'm going to find this element by writing driver dot find element and by CSS selector. And know what? I'm going to put the CSS selector on the next line. And the value was no, well, let me just paste it because I believe I copied it. Yes, bingo. So I copied the value. And with this CSS selector, span.ng hyphen binding is the value. We need one more thing because we need to verify the information. So we get that information from the application with dot txt. Text will return the value. So let's assign the value to remaining checkboxes will be the name. Bingo. Okay, so now for the last statement, we are going to assert remaining checkboxes equal to four of five remaining. Let's run from the terminal by writing pi test demo pi test, which is the package name followed by the file name test underscore cross underscore browser dot pi. And while this is running, let's go to the website and I see three items were collected. And on the site, let's go to automation build. And on automation build, we see 1.0, which is Chrome. That's the execution. We see 2.0, which is Firefox, followed by 3.0, which is Edge. For us, Chrome, on Chrome, we see the test results. And on this part, we see Lambda Test Grid on Chrome as the name. That was the name. We see Platform Windows 10 and the version 109, 109.0. It's the same for Firefox 2.0. Has the name, platform, and the browser version. Also on Edge. We see Lambda Test Grid on Edge. Now, we also see duration. We see status. And the test results are at the top. Build sessions, processing, pass, fail. Now, let's go ahead and click the test and look at some more information. We see basic info. Input config. We see the videos, which is right here. And also the region. Next to the video, we see all commands, we see the network, and we see the logs. That's it for cross-browser testing on Lambda Test. Thanks for watching the PyTest video series. And in this series, the playlist, we have a lot of information that we had covered. We covered intro to PyTest framework. We also cover how to install PyTest. 
run our first test in PyTest. Next was the assertions in PyTest. Then we ran multiple test scripts and a subset of our test scripts. The next video was grouping our tests using markers, followed by PyTest fixtures. Then we parameterized our test, then skipped our test, stopped our test, and failed our test. The last three tutorials were page object model in PyTest, generate reports in PyTest, and this video, which was cross-browser testing on Lambda test. If you would like to learn more, then make sure to follow the blogs at www.lambdatest.com forward slash blog and community.lambdatest.com. In addition to the blogs, you can earn a certification at www.lambdatest.com forward slash certifications. Get educated, get recognized.